When you pot up tomatoes, how big of a pot should you use? Let's tackle that coming up. Thanks for watching the video today. My name's Diego and I'm here to help you streamline gardening to make gardening easier for busy people. One way to make gardening easier if you're busy is to cut out unnecessary work, saving yourself time. Think about that and let's talk tomatoes. Most of you are gonna start your tomato seeds in a small cell tray like this, and then after 30 days, you're gonna take that seedling and move it to a larger size pot, something like this or like this. That process is known as potting up. The idea is, before you go and transplant that plant into the ground, you're gonna move it into a larger size pot so the plant can grow bigger, build up a bigger root base, and make it more resilient for when it faces the conditions in nature in the field. The potting up process may or may not be necessary. I'll have a future video on that, but for now let's talk about potting up. Specifically asking the question, how big of a pot do you need when going from a cell tray to the next size up? Something this big? Or something this big? Or even bigger, something this big? Or bigger yet, something this big. Let's look at these four tomato plants that I have and talk about the pros and cons of larger and much larger pots. All four of these Roma tomato plants were started on the same date, September 17th, and they were potted up on the same date, October 26th. Everything for these plants was equal except the size of the pot that the tomatoes were potted up into. The twins, all four of them, spent their first five weeks in one of my epic four cell trays. Then they all went their separate ways, except for this guy who decided to stay home with daddy. He didn't wanna leave, he was a little shy. So this plant has been inside this four cell tray for approximately eight and a half weeks. Now this four cell tray is larger than your typical six cell tray. It's three inches deep and it's two by two inch squares. If I pull this one out, you can see what the root ball looks like. Brother number two was moved into one of these orange pots right here. Sister went inside a one gallon nursery pot and the other sister went inside a five gallon nursery pot. When I potted the tomatoes up on October 26, I measured the height of all of them from soil to upper leaf tip here are the measurements at that time. 3.5 weeks have gone by. Let's see how the plants have grown since then. The one that stayed in the four cell tray hasn't grown at all. In fact, this one actually suffered some damage on its central leader here um, due to drying out. We had a 90 degree day kind of out of the blue, caught me off guard. This one dried out, the tip of the plant dried out and the growth was basically stunted. One disadvantage of a smaller size pot. The next size, the orange pot here, which is about five inches high, we'll say five inches across, just compare these two. Much larger, this went from 10 inches to 21 and a half inches. So you've got an 11 and a half inches growth on this versus the one that just sat in here didn't grow at all. Well, that's great. Would a larger pot make a difference? If we go from orange to our one gallon, putting the soil levels the same, the one gallon is slightly larger. The one gallon actually grew 13 and a half inches versus 11 and a half inches for the orange. And I'll show the soil volumes for each of these pots on screen. So, so far this is the winner, the one gallon pot. It's grown 13 and a half inches in three and a half weeks. Well, what if we gave it even more soil? Well, we go to the five gallon pot, which we have right here. It's leaning a little bit and you think the five gallon pot would grow a lot more. It's definitely bushier, but it's not higher. It's kind of grown fatter, rounder. And this one has grown to a height of 22 inches from 10 inches. So 12 inches growth out of the five gallon pot, 13 and a half inches growth out of the one gallon pot. Kind of unintuitive. You'd think that more soil would mean more growth. And in a way we do have that because if you just, just look at these two, 
and you can see the one gallon pot is less bushy than the five gallon. Get out of the screen. I'm trying to film a video here. We can look at soil volumes for each of these pots right here and try and get a feel for how much of a difference did soil volume make. Clearly more soil volume is better, but there is a law of diminishing returns. Given this, what's the best pot size to pot up into? This is a subjective answer, but I will say that the orange pot, this one right here, this is the best pot size to pot up into based on the ones that I tried. The four cell, clearly too small to have a plant in it for this amount of time. And the big five gallon pot, just that's not practical. I think the orange pot is best because it has the best blend of soil volume, plant size, space utilization in the nursery, and transportability. Plant size meaning we get a lot of growth. Soil volume meaning we don't actually need a lot of soil to get as much growth. There's less soil in here relative to the amount of growth we got versus the five gallon pot. Space utilization means how, much, how many of these can we put in a nursery? If you only have a four by eight, say, table to do all your nursery stock in, well, you can fit more small pots on that same four by eight table than five gallon pots, which just occupy a larger footprint. The other thing is soil volume, man. Like how much soil do you want to use when transplanting tomato plants? This is five gallons of soil. That's going to get expensive really quick. So really what we want is the most bang for our buck in terms of soil usage to healthy plant growth. When you think about big pots versus small pots, there are pros and cons to each. Here are some of the pros of big pots. Bigger pot, larger plant, but maybe too large. Large isn't always a good thing. Bigger pots have a larger water buffer, meaning it's harder for that soil volume to completely dry out. This little four cell can dry out very easily on a hot day. A well-watered five gallon pot is gonna be a lot harder to dry out on a very hot day. Larger pots also produce healthy plants, more soil volume, more room for roots to grow, more nutrients in that soil, healthier plant. The cons of big pots, tons of soil. It's gonna be expensive, time consuming, and a pain in the butt to fill a bunch of large pots. If you have to do 50 tomatoes, you need 50 five gallon pots of soil, 250 gallons of soil just to pot up your tomato plants. That's a lot of soil to deal with. Another con is they are a pain to transplant. They're gonna be heavy to bring out into the field and they're also gonna be a pain to put into the ground when you are in the field. You have to dig a huge hole, you have to get the root ball out successfully intact in one piece to transplant it. That's not gonna be a fun thing to transplant. Another con of big pots is they take up a large nursery footprint. If you're space constrained, the bigger the pot you use, the less total pots you can have in your nursery. If we look at smaller pots, the pros and cons are basically reversed. The pros of small pots are low soil volume is needed, they're easy to transplant, and they don't take up much nursery space. The smaller pots have a few cons, smaller plant growth, less of a water buffer, meaning they're easier to dry out in a very hot day, and depending on how small the pot is, it could stress the plant more. So when deciding on how big of a pot you should use to pot your tomatoes up into, find something in the middle. Not too small, not too big. Look for the happy medium, something like this. You don't need this exact size. This isn't a very specific recommendation. Just get something close to this, about five inches by five inches in the shape of a circle or a cube. Now that you know what size to use for potting up, Think about that when gardening in the spring. One other thing to think about is, do you actually have to pot up at all? And I don't think you do. I did an experiment on this last year. I didn't make a video on it because I was trying to prove concept before I made a video on it, but I will make a video on it this year where I started tomatoes in these six cell trays and I went right from here into the ground. 30 days, seed, to transplant in the ground and the plants did really well. And I can say they did really well because I'm comparing them to tomatoes that I potted up 
and transplanted 30 days later. And the ones that were potted up had basically the same growth performance as the ones that were transplanted directly into the field in the long term. Meaning it didn't matter whether they were potted up or they came out of the smaller cell tray, all the plants performed the exact same. The key to not potting up and going from a small cell tray into the field really comes down to timing and your climate. You have to get your timing right because those baby plants are very fragile. And if you don't time it right and you get hit with a cold night or too hot of a day, you can kill that baby plant. So get your timing right and you can actually grow really good tomatoes without potting up at all. In summary, when potting up tomatoes, find a pot that's in the middle size range, something that's about five inches by five inches by five inches. That's what you're shooting for. That's gonna give you the best blend of water buffer, plant growth, soil volume needed, and nursery space utilization. Plus it'll be nice and easy to transplant. Stay away from pots that are too small. They're gonna give you a lot of negatives like drying out or inferior plant growth. Stay away from pots that are too big. They're gonna to use too much soil and take up too much nursery space. Look for the middle ground. I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. If you wanna see more experiments like this, let me know in the comments below. I'm, I'm really into these types of things. And if you have questions on this experiment, let me know in the comments below as well. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work. Thanks for watching the video today. We appreciate that. Watch more great videos right here.